Okay, so we um, discussed the general memory peripherals overview, and now it's time to dive into road decoder design, where road decoder is one of the most important components of the memory. So just as a, uh, as a reminder, a, re a decoder reduces the number of select signals by log 2. So if we have W rows, the number of row address edits is going to be A, which is equal to log 2 of W. And what that enables us to do is if we need to actually address all of these words or uh, all of these rows in the case of uh, a general structure, not necessarily a memory, um, instead of having to, to send um, W uh, bits, so W wires across the chip, we can send uh, A wires where a equals log 2 of w in this uh, in this case and that is much many fewer wires that have to actually traverse the chip that goes into this logic block which we call a decoder which uh, decodes this encoded binary word and um, it, it turns on one of these uh, uh, of these rows so if we have our word is you know zero 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 and at the end our uh, LSBs are going to be one zero that means that word number two because this is in binary two is going to be selected it and we will turn on word number two so that is what our decoder is supposed to be doing okay how does this work well uh, as you probably have seen in a previous uh, uh, course what happens is is that for each of these lines so we have our uh, array over here each of these lines has a different output function that will turn it on and in boolean you know logic we have f of a b c d etc is going to be uh, a single zero or a one right in in the end so we need a, a different f over here f of zero f of one and so forth for each um, row and actually we're just going to do it with a simple AND gate so for example for f of zero it should turn on when we have zero 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 over here and for f of one it should turn on when we have you know one zero zero or zero zero one depending on which we chose as the msb and which the lsb so uh, as a total we need if we have for example um, a, a, an eight bit row address so if our a equals eight over here and we're uh, sending eight signals across the chip um, two to the power of eight is going to be 256 so we have uh, we need to select one out of 256 rows so we will need an eight uh, input and gate with each one having a different combination of inputs that will turn it on okay so for example um, if we want to turn on word line zero what we're going to do is we're going to put um, you know of these eight bits of addresses we're going to have it uh, realize the function a7 bar a6 bar etc until a0 bar and then if we get 0000, zero, 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 zero when we invert that it's going to be 11111 one, 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 which is the only signal that will actually cause a1 to be at the output of an, uh, of uh, the and gate that is over there and similarly if we want the last row which will be um, word line 255 we will use a7 uh, without the bar a6 a5 etc until a0 and then only a 11111 will cause the um, and gate to have an, a one at the output and assert the row of course we can use de morgan and uh, and create a nor decoder instead of using uh, and gates and so in the previous example instead of having uh, and gates we can use nor gates sometimes such a thing will be useful because remember that cmos is an inverting type of a logic and so we prefer to use um, nors and nands um, we can also use a nand with an inverter which is actually something we'll often do but just uh, to see how a nor gate would work we'd have an eight input nor gate so with wl0 it would be um, this function and with WL255 it will be um, this function. So how should we build this thing? So let's say again we want to have uh, an SRAM array that just for the example we have an 8-bit address in other words 256 rows and let's say it has 256 columns. What do we need? We need 256 8 input AND gates as we can see here on the right side of our screen. Okay, each gate needs to drive 256 bit cells because we said here that there are 256 columns. So um, that's a pretty big fan out. And we have various options to implement this. We can have this one 8 bit uh, input NAND gate um, followed by a CMOS inverter, which will give us an AND. Okay, we can divide that into two stages so we can have two four input NAND gates um, when a NOR um, following them. Or we can have more stages. For example, here we can have four two input NAND gates followed by two um, two input NOR gates followed by a two input NAND gate and finally followed by another inverter. Which one is the best option? So to solve that, we go back to logical effort, which I hope you have seen in a previous course. So just as a quick reminder for logical effort, um, 
the uh, total delay of a uh, of a gate of a stage, uh, the TPD of stage number i, can be defined as the um, basic nominal TPD of a uh, of an inverter um, times what we call p uh, p of that stage times gamma plus uh, the uh, electrical effort of that stage. What are each of these numbers? So electrical effort is defined as the logical effort of that stage times the effective fan out of that stage, or um, in other words, the logical effort of that stage, which is a characteristic of the uh, the Boolean function, or the uh, at least the implementation of that gate, times the branching effort of that stage, um, times the, uh, the the electrical fan out will be actually the um, the input capacitance of the next stage divided by the input capacitance of this stage. So it's kind of like the effective loading of a certain stage depending on its size. The path effort is defined as the total fan out of the whole path times the total logical effort of the uh, of, of, of the entire path times the branching effort of the entire path. And when we have the big uh, letters, we mean the total of the whole path and not of just one um, stage I inside it. Um, and the total fan out is actually the the uh, final load that we have divided by the uh, initial load that we have. So that's the total fan out of the path times the uh, multiplication of all the um, logical efforts along the way and the multiplication of all the branch efforts we have along the way. The optimal um, electrical effort, which uh, it can be defined as taking an n square root uh, an n root of the path effort, and so we get uh, square uh, root n of f times uh, pi l e times pi b. Okay, the optimal um, the optimal um, number of stages, therefore, is log of the optimal electrical effort, uh, and so uh, you can see here that if we can solve that, we find that the uh, optimal way of making our path. The final TPD will be TPD of the inverter, the basic nominal kind of constant that we have for our technology, times a, uh, a, a sum of all of these uh, uh, partial TPDs, which is uh, the uh, the uh, the um, contamination delay of that stage times the gamma, which is a, a another technology parameter, uh, plus the electrical effort of that stage, and um, and. So uh, you can see here that we already found the electrical effort of the stage is uh, is the the n root of the path effort, and there are n of those, and we have a sum of all the uh, contamination delays of of each of the gates around there. So that's logical effort, and we saw that again in a previous course. So uh, if you don't remember it, you can um, go and uh, rehearse it. So now that we remind, reminded ourselves what logical effort is, let's go and see how we can solve logical effort to optimally define a uh, decoder here. So for the logical effort calculation, we need to start with three things. We need the output load, which we'll call CL. We need the input capacitance, which we call C in. And we need to know what the branching effort of the entire path is. What is the load capacitance? Well, that was defined in the problem. It was 256 bit cells on each word line. Okay, so... Um, this, the word line uh, capacitance is two, uh, 256 times the capacitance of a cell plus the capacitance of a wire. Just let's ignore the wire. It, uh, of course, this is in the end just some sort of a number. What about the input capacitance? Okay, so um, the, the input capacitance is what our initial drivers are that uh, are connected to. So let's uh, just assume that our address drivers can drive a bit more than one bit cell. So we're just making an assumption here that the input, the address drivers have uh, input capacitance of 4C cell, but that's again just um, something that we decided on. We could make them bigger or smaller, of course. That's how much they're going to load the, uh, the net that is going to be driving them. What about the branching effort? So that's an interesting question. Let's take another look at the Boolean expressions. So for uh, the word line zero, we have a7 bar, a6 bar, etc. until a0 bar. And for word line 255, we have a7, a6 until a0. What we can see here kind of, and if we would draw a lot more of these uh, expressions, that exactly half of the signals use some sort of ai, like a6 goes to half of the signal, and ai bar goes to the other half. For example, every other um, 
every other word gets a zero and a zero bar. Or the first half of the words get a zero, a seven bar, and the second half of the words get a seven. So exactly half of the words get each um, address signal if we um, relate to the address and the address bar as two separate signals. Okay, so um, it, so each address, each driver, they get you know a one an A1 bar. Each of them, they drive exactly 128 of the eight input AND gates, but only one of them is on the selected path. And if we remember our definition of branching effort, um, it is uh, exactly the total, uh, the total fan out of a certain signal um, divided by the fan out, the, the actual uh, um, load that we have on the path that we want to choose. So on a path, all we want to do is drive a single NAND gate, a single uh, um, uh, word line driver, but we, have a, we are actually connected to half of the um, NAND gates that are in the total system, so that's 127 CNAND. So in other words, our total fan out is going to be 128 NAND gates, but we only really care about one of the NAND gates, and therefore 128 divided by 1 is 128, and that's going to be our total branch uh, branching effort. Uh, of course, this is one stage, so it's pretty simple. B, uh, small bi is going to be equal to large B, and that's going to be 128. So therefore, we can now calculate the number of stages. The path effort is the logical, the total logical effort times the total branching effort times the total fan out. And it comes out if we assume our minimal logical effort. And this is just saying that logical effort equals 1. We're going to have uh, um, a, a already a path effort of 2 to the power of 13. So that's about 8,000. Uh, again, if we take our best case logical effort where we assume everything is an inverter, everything's going to be probably worse than an inverter, right? We already know that there are NAND gates and so forth, but um, let's say that the best case is going to be that our logical effort is 1. The minimum number of stages for the optimal delay is going to be log 3.6 or whatever it is for your sp sp specific technology, but it comes out around 7 stages. That's a lot of stages. Looking back at the implementations that we showed before, um, which is the one with the minimum logical effort. So we see that for the first implementation over here, the logical effort is going to be, you know, three and a third, and the uh, the contamination delay is going to be nine. Okay. Uh, for the second one, the logical effort again, and remember that both logical effort and contamination delay are a function of the actual uh, gate implementation itself. So a four input NAND gate CMOS is going to have a certain logical effort, which is five over three, and it's going to have a certain contamination delay, which is four. So we get that the uh, logical effort is uh, 10 is again, three and a third. And the uh, propagation delay is actually a bit better. It's six. But if we go to four stages, our logical effort actually goes down and uh, our propagation delay, which is a constant and isn't, isn't usually as bad, is, uh, is kind of similar. Um, and if we take the really much longer um, path where we broke down each of these into NAND gates followed by inverters, what we're going to have is that our, um, lo our total path logical effort is 2.37, which is substantially lower than the first case where we had 3 and a third, um, even though our, uh, you know, the uh, intrinsic delay of each stage is because each stage adds a bit more delay is going to be higher, probably that logical effort, which is substantially lower, is more important in the total equation. And this is uh, the type of thing we wanted to choose. Remember, our optimal number of stages was 7. Here we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So this um, really is uh, the best case that we could get, at least in terms of logical effort. So um, now we can actually calculate the path effort. Remember, beforehand, we assumed that the logical effort was just 1. But now we know what it is. So if we take this case, um, we can actually um, we can put 2.37, which we found out was the logical effort of this entire network, and we get that uh, the path effort comes out to 19,000 or so, and then the optimal number of stages is 7.7, .7, so that's either 7 or 8 or something like that. And we see, again, we have here six stages, maybe adding the address drivers, that's another stage. So we're pretty much around the optimal number of stages. We could add another inverter or two to get closer to the optimal number of stages. So does this lead us to any implementation problems? And the answer is yes. If we look at the address line capacitance, our assumption was that the, um, the address driver um, had the size of 4C cell. 
But remember that each of these address has to drive 128 gates. That means there's a huge, huge fan out um, for, for one of these things. And we will probably need to buffer the address uh, lines, and this will ruin our whole analysis. Another thing is the bit cell pitch. Remember that each signal drives only one row of bit cells. How are we going to fit eight address signals into this pitch? Remember, these bit cells are really small. They're thin cells, okay? They're going to be something like this, and we need to fit, you know, eight lines into this uh, into this pitch that's going to be really tough how are we going to do it okay so the solution is what we call pre-decoding okay and the concept is uh, if we take two paths say um, word line 254 and word line 255 we can look at their implementation uh, what um, word line 255 is you know a0 a1 etc until a7 without the bars and um, word line 254 is the same thing just with a uh, zero bar so we have one 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 and then zero at the end okay and if we look at this you see that we have um, this NAND gate over here, it gets A0 and A1, and again, it uh, little by little propagates to the end. And on this side, we have A0 bar and A1 that, again, propagates to the end. That's fine, but if we take the other side, this green NAND gate over here, it gets A6, A7 that propagates to the end. And over here, we have the same NAND gate, A6, A7. And if we look deeper, the red gate over here and the red gate over here have the same inputs. The purple gate over here and the purple gate over here have the same input. The blue gate over here and the blue gate over here have the same input. So we're actually replicating a lot of the, um, the work we're doing. Do we really have to do that or can we somehow share um, the, the gates? Can we do that? Well, this, for example, is what we call the pre-decoding uh, concept. And what we're going to try to do is share the purple output in creating the logic that comes out over here, which is um, word line uh, 255 and word line 254, and try to somehow take this logic gate, for instance, and use the same logic gate in creating both of those signals. So how do we do that? And it's actually pretty cool. Um, I don't know if you'll straightforward see how we're sharing the gates, but once you think about it a little bit, you can try to understand it. So if we look at the final Boolean expression, it actually has a combination of a group of inputs. By grouping together a few inputs, we can create a small decoder, and then we just add the outputs of all of these, what we call pre-decoders. So um, to turn that into something practical, if we have two 4 to 16 pre-decoders, remember we had eight address bits, so we need a total of eight inputs, and so we'll use two 4 to 16 predecoders. That means two 4-bit inputs, that equals eight. So we'll call the first decoder D, and D will be a decoder that will get the uh, LSBs, A0, A1, A2, and A3, as we can see over here. So A1, A2, A3, and so forth, they go into this 4 to 16 decoder, and they bring us this function D. We have another predecoder gets the other inputs, A4, A5, A6, and A7, and it's also a 4 to 16 decoder, and it uh, provides us the function E at the output. Uh, of course, again, these are 4 to 16, so D is 16 bits, and E is 16 bits, and they're one hot. Um, they're one hot. Okay, so let's see what happens when we look at word line zero. Okay, so word line zero somewhere over here has to be a function that takes this and this and puts it in some sort of a function and gives us word line zero. Okay, so word line zero is zero 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 zero, which turned on uh, uh, D zero over here, and uh, zero 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 here, which turned on E zero. So now if we take E zero and D zero and and them we're going to get word line zero. And that's true for every combination of different bits. For example, let's look at word line 255. That's going to be D255 and did with E, I mean, sorry, D15 uh, and did with E15. Okay? And the same with um, word line 254. That's going to again use uh, um, E15, but now we're going to end it with D14 that comes out over here. So we can actually make these partial um, these partial lines, these 16 lines, and then combine two pa a pair of one of these lines with one of these lines and get each one of the functions for um, the outputs that we need to uh, create our actual word lines. And that's what pre-decoding is. So let's look again at our example. So we, so we said we have 4 to 16 decoders called D and called E. These are, again, decoders. They're, they're complete decoders, and 
by the way, we can pre-decode these as well. And we said there's word line 0 is D0, E0. Word line 255 is D15, E15. Word line 254 is D15, E14. And of course, there's a function like this for each and every one of the word lines. Um, and, and that's how we do the pre-decoding. Okay, now what that means is that each one of our, um, of our word line drivers is just an AND gate that takes two signals, one signal from here, one signal from here, and puts it in an AND gate. So we have 256 now, two input AND gates. And this and this are 4, four to 16 decoders. We have two of those, okay? And that's how we're creating our whole thing. Beforehand, remember, we needed 256 eight input decoders, uh, eight input NAND gates, and we didn't have any of these decoders. Okay, so let's see. What is our new branching effort in, in this design? And that's a real interesting type of a thing. As before, each address, A0, for example, it drives half of the lines of the decoder. Remember, the D is just a small case of our big decoder. Instead of being an 8 to 256 decoder, it's a 4 to 16 decoder. We saw that A0 in the 8 to 256 decoder drove half of the 256 outputs. In other words, it drove 128. Well, in the case of a 4 to 16 decoder, A0 drives 8 of the outputs. And A0 bar drives the other 8 outputs. A1 drives 8 of the outputs. A1 bar drives the other 8 of the outputs. Okay, so it, it drives half of them. Each pre-decoder output, okay, it drives how many gates? Well, if we, if we take a look at it, what we're actually doing is we have 16 lines that come out of here and 16 lines that come out of here. And if we look how many lines each of these, how many uh, NAND gates each of these go into, we'll find out that um, each of them has to go into the total number of lines divided by 16, 256 divided by 16 post decoder gates. So the branching effort of the second stage, which is each one of these output lines of the uh, pre-decoders, is uh, 256 divided by 16. And then when we look at the total branching effort, it's the branching effort of the first stage, which we said was half of 16, or 8. And this, of the second stage is 256 divided by 16. And when we multiply these two numbers, amazingly, we get the same number as before. So the branching effort doesn't change because we changed the structure of our, uh, of our decoder. The fact that we broke our decoder into several stages keeps the branching effort the same, and that's pretty cool. So why is pre-decoding a better solution than uh, just using an 8-input NAND gate on each line? So first of all, each address driver is now driving only 8 gates. Remember, each address driver had to have a fan out of 128 gates, which is a big thing. Eight gates is something a fan out of a standard size type of a gate can drive pretty easily. Um, driving 128 gates with the wires and so forth is going to be really heavy. So there's less capacitance. It's not as hard to do and so forth. We saved a ton of area by sharing gates. So remember before we showed that those purple and green and so forth gates, they're basically the same. By pre-decoding, we created each one of these 16 pre-decoded lines. They're actually like partial uh, um, partial uh, solutions to the uh, the decoded out, uh, output. So we're sharing the same logic done in, in, uh, in the pre-decoder. Finally, we can pitch fit two input NAND gates. So again, a two input NAND gate, if we have our array over here, and each one of the lines of the array is very thin because we have these thin cell SRAMs, right? And they're very thin. They're really small size. Putting in an eight input NAND gate over here is going to be tough, especially getting eight tracks to go in in this size of a thing. But putting in a two input NAND gate isn't going to be too bad. I mean, this is going to be at least two, um, uh, two tracks. So... Uh, that's actually an easy thing. So if we just have one, two input NAND gate per row, that's going to be pretty easy to pitch fit. Let's look at another pre-decoding example. Okay, um, let's try to use two, uh, four two input pre-decoders. Can we do that? And the answer is yes, we can change our pre-decoding to any way we want. Okay, so um, again, so in our example, we, we have eight inputs total. Okay, now what we want to do is we want to use four two input predecoders. So we're going to say instead of having eight, eight, eight inputs and having one AND gate with eight inputs, however many I drew there, we're going to uh, try to have instead um, two input AND gates in our predecoder. So we're going to have a two input AND gate, right? Um, and this is going to be a two to four predecoder. 
but again we have eight inputs a0 a1 a2 a3 a4 a5 a6 and a7 so how many of these do we need one two go into another NAND gate with four outputs one two I mean this is a decoder right uh, with four outputs and one two go into a decoder with four outputs so we actually need four pre-decoders that are, uh, uh, are two to four now again each of the um, final drivers which we're gonna again need 256 somethings this is 256 which each one this is word line zero word line one etc until word line 255 that's not going to change but what are they? They're a function of all of these four. So one of these lines is going to go into here. One of these lines is going to go into here. One of these lines is going to go into here. And one of these lines is going to go into here. So 256, four input NAND gates. Um, is that better or worse? Well, again, we have the pitch fitting and so forth, and we'll look at it in a second. How are we going to actually lay out such a thing? Well, that's another thing that's uh, really nice. So remember, this is our array over here. And it has these thin cell SRAMs inside it uh, that we need to drive the word line into the thin cell uh, SRAM. And we need to put this AND gate and NAND nor whatever it is um, over here that's going to drive this word line. And it has to have some sort of an input. Let's say in this case um, a four input AND gate and let's say we have enough tracks to do that. Well, where are we going to get all of this crazy wiring? Because remember, we have these crazy wires times 256 that's going to come out a whole mess of routing. Uh, well, actually, it's pretty cool. We can put our decoders down here. Okay, so we have four of these decoders. Right? Each of them gets two bits at the input. Two bits, two bits, two bits, and two bits. Each of them has four bits at the output. Okay, and we route these four bits all the way up the array. And now there's some word line in the middle it needs say this bit from here and this bit from here and this bit from here and this bit from here so we stick a via and here we uh, uh we connect them this one and this one i didn't do it very nicely in uh, the height way but these are just really we have these um, at each uh for each of these guys we have one coming from here and one coming from here and one coming from uh, whoops from here and one coming from here okay so we just need to put this kind of regular structure and decide where our vias tap between uh, the line that goes up and the line that goes horizontally and it lets us really make this uh, structure nice and tight and so forth so you can see that over here and the question is how do we choose a configuration should we choose this for two to four predecoders or two, four to 16 predecoders, and which one is better? And that's a tough question. Well, let's look at the first category and let's say pitch fitting, which is better, a two input NAND gate over here or a four input NAND gate over here. And obviously, since again, this is gonna be a thin cell and it's gonna be really tight and our pitch is gonna be really small, we should try to put uh, the smaller of the two gates or the less complex of the two gates, which only needs two tracks in order to be put there. So a two input NAND gate wins. So um, uh, this, uh, the winner is the four to 16 predecoders. Okay, what about the next category? Switching capacitance. How, um, so which one has better switching capacitance? And uh, a lot of you probably think that, for example, this one would have a better switching capacitance because these are smaller decoders or something like that. But actually looking at it, what happens is, is let's say we go and we're going to turn on, we have 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, turns into 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. So we chose, uh, you know, word line 0, and then we chose the, the last word line in our whole thing. Um, so uh, uh so actually what's going to happen in in this case so 0000, 0, 0, 0, 0 is going to have this um this uh d0 we called it uh lit up and e0 lit up and when we go to 11111 then d15 is going to be lit up and e15 is going to be lit up right so what we did is this whole capacitor was now um, d discharged and this one was charged and this whole capacitor was discharged and this one was charged these are big capacitors because look at the the wire over here and over here it's really long and big okay that was our worst case but what happens over here 
This wire is long, just the same length as this. Okay, this wire is long, probably even longer than this. And here in that case, we had this, 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 and this turned, they got discharged. And we had to charge this, 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 and this. So in the case where we had more um, pre-decoders, smaller pre-decoders, we had to actually switch more capacitance, twice as much pretty much capacitance as in the case where we had uh, the, the fewer um, decoders over here. So in this case, again, the 4 to 16 one was better. Okay, what about stages before the large uh, capacitance? So again, this is the large capacitance. These wires are big, okay? Large wire, we're going we're gonna to run logical effort on the implementation of this guy in order to drive this uh, well. Well, here it's a 2 to 4 decoder, right? What's a 2 to 4 decoder? It's just 4, um, you know, AND gates. So let's say we'll make them with NAND gates. So they're going to be something like this, but 2 input uh, 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 NAND gates. That's not a lot of stages. On the other hand, this, we can make it again with, you know, a couple of stages over here. Like For, for example, we can make it um, like this. Just make one of these guys, one of these four input NAND gates, right? My drawing is not great, but um, so this can be a four input, uh, you know, this this can be one of those one of those 16 lines. So we already have, you know, four stages over here, which we saw is going to probably be better to drive the large capacitance. So again, the 4 to 16 version beat the um, 2 to 4 version. So the conclusion is probably do as much pre-decoding as possible. In other words, use the largest pre-decoder over here. But I just want to uh, point out one more thing. We have a 4 to 16 decoder. We can also do pre-decoding on it. So we can make that with, uh, you know, uh, um, two 2 to 4 decoders. So we can have 2 to 4, 2 to 4, that they go, uh, they have a 4-bit output over here, and they can make the 4 to 16 decoders, which are, um, uh, two input NAND gates, 16 two input NAND gates. Okay, so uh, we can do more stages of pre-decoding if we want. How about an alternative solution? And you guys uh, remember that we have such a thing as dynamic logic. So um, you can also make these decoders dynamically. We have what we call a NOR decoder or a NOR structure, and we're going to see this again when we discuss uh, alternative memories because when we say NAND and NOR, it's how things are connected. So a, uh, uh, if you remember correctly, a NOR gate was built something like um, like this. We had uh, two PMOSs uh, that were in series and two NMOSs that were in parallel. That's the NOR structure. And here, uh, uh, and even if we wanted to do, for example, let's take it a step further that's closer to this. If we had a pseudo NMOS type or a dynamic type of a, uh, of a structure, we'd have just a single pull up um, that, for example, dynamically charged the output and then a NOR structure, a NOR pull down underneath. So this is what we can see here. We have uh, these pre-charged transistors. These, uh, for each of the word lines, we pre-charge the, uh, the word line over here. Okay, and then we have um, a, a tap to uh, two different um, uh, um, addresses, so A0 and A1 bar over here. And if one of them is on, so if one of them is zero, okay, then we pull down the, then we have this connection to ground, and we pull down the precharge. So that's a NOR structure, and that's how we can um, really just uh, do this easily. The, the other structure is a NAND structure, and a NAND structure, remember with a CMOS NAND, we, um, we had the parallel type of a, uh, uh, of a connection was in the pull up, and the, uh, se whoops, the serial connection was in the pull down. Okay, so the NAND structure means it's a serial pull down type of a thing. Okay, so in this case, we have our, um, our pre-charge is going to be, again, this is our pre-charge is going to be in a PMOS. And that's over here. We can see that we pre-charge uh, one of the lines. And then only if this and this are both on, so if both this and this get a 1, then we will discharge it. Now, obviously, what are the... Um, what are the pros and cons of these two structures? In a NOR structure, it's enough that one of these uh, transistors will uh, be on to discharge. And therefore, we only go through one transistor to ground. And in the best case, we can even have two transistors in parallel 
pulling to ground. But um, with a NAND decoder, we always have to go through a serial connection. So we have to discharge through a bunch of serial co connected NMOSs. These are just, uh, you know, two input decoders. So they're real simple and we only have two NANDs. Uh, that's a uh, th th that's the, uh, the the advantage of a NOR decoder. It's faster. The disadvantage is that you see we have to have a connection to ground in each of these cells, and therefore, whereas these are just real simple, the the um, transistors are just diffusion connected to their their neighbor, and so it makes it a more simple type of a structure. So um, that's a NOR and a NAND type of a dynamic decoder. You can also make it with a weak pull-up type of a pseudo NMOS. So the, that's an alternative solution to decoders. With that, we finish our discussion on um, row decoders, and we'll go on to column multiplexers and precharge and sense amplifiers.